uh <gasps> cowgirl bebop oh my god this season is killing it with the fucking titles dude holy shit yes absolutely sign me the fuck up where are we oh we're back at the amusement park so we try out rash mountain first it wasn't scary so much as lacking a radiation proof magnetic field i think it helped that cody was belching out the opening to team titans it really took my mind off the solar burns that's so certain of him i guess it's not such a bad apple after all i know right and then we went on the anti-matter horn it was a lot scarier but not as bad as cody being on the horn with gma the whole time she thinks he totaled her car, but she has zero proof, uh, aside from a signed note. But he'd never do something so careless, right? Well, Crimey, I guess I've only ever seen him off puppets. What? Only ever seen him off puppets? Ah, oh, yes, we have murdered a few puppets. Exactly. Oh, speaking of, it's funny that you mentioned that. On the way here, Pubba was giving us trouble for the eye color thing, and Cody dunked it in a cotton candy machine. The, 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 the kind that's a hot spinning tube of metal and molten sugar? Yeah, he usually misses. <laughs> uh, he, he sure loves to stir up a ruckus. But it's good to hear you two are having a fun, a good time. I was worried between all the ascending and descending and getting shot out with lasers that you'd be toast. Thank the gods that's all behind you now. Cody slams the door open. Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Stop making nicknames for me. <laughs> that's what that was. Sure thing, boss. Oh, hey, horse. I mean, Peggy. What's up? Uh, hey, hey, Cody. Maybe it was just telling me about how you're helping him man in his fear of heights. It sure is nice of you. Well, sure. I mean, can't be afraid of heights if we're gonna fight a god. They fly, you know. Mm-hmm, they sure do. If I fight a what? Didn't Crunchwrap tell you about our project? Your nicknames aren't usually as food-based. Are you hungry? <laughs> wow, oh my god. BFFs for almost two weeks and you already know me so well. <laughs> oh, shit, what the fuck? God damn it, Peggy, you get one 15 minute break per week! One, five, get it right! Yikes, guess we'll talk to you later, pigs. Who knows, if we keep this up, maybe the gods will earn some respect and give you a longer break. What anti gods rhetoric are your fellow idiots spouting? Peter pulls Cody out of the store before Marsha can get a whiff of their eyes. Whatever, just keep your freaks out of here if you know what's good for them. Oh shit, nice hat. <laughs> Another customer enters the shop. Ah, oh, that's one cool looking cool kid. Back to work. Where did we get this hat? Oh my god. <laughs> Yeehaw, the weekend's finally here and what better place than outer space to spend it? Nebulans as far away from the drama of cool kids, losers, and gods as you could get. There ain't nothing here that can take me back to Hella City. Nice. <gasps> oh shit, Minnie accidentally steps, steps on a stray alien toy. These weirdos are everywhere. This way someone's gonna trip and fall into a world of hurt. Do this one too. <laughs> wow. I love the squeaky noise. It's a good it's a good noise. Yes! Nothing better than feeding your eyes with the visual wonders of a well themed gift shop. Giant alien plushies, centimetry, the centimillipede. Yep, that's what that says. Woof. Nebulonian slippers to protect your little feetsies from toxic Martian regolith, regolith, yep, that's also what that says, and perfectly generic mugs. Good to know I have a fallback if Mr. Goy busts her mug up again. <laughs> Let's see here. Mina, minia, 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 min
Oh my god, I should know by now. No one includes Minnie. Sheesh. Howdy, fellow invader. You wouldn't happen to sell cotton candy, would you? Whoa there, cool kid. Do I look like some lame green Neblonian working retail and service of cool kids like you? Uh, yeah. Look, just go bother the dimwood on cash. That's what we hired her for. As for me, I'm on supervising duty. Supervising. That's the only way I'll stop. It. The only way I'll stop is if I'm blessed by the gods themselves. Oh, really, huh? Let's hope that never comes to that then, huh? It's going to happen. I'm going to blast the shit out of you. You just wait. Wait, this shirt looks familiar. Hmm. Is it that re is it from that reboot of that 80s cartoon about a princess warrior girl? Minnie. Minnie. Minnie, you're killing me here. No, 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 it's definitely from that cartoon with the magic witch made of owls. Minnie, did you not actually watch either of those absolutely A-plus shows? I'm going to be so mad. Ah, uh, who knows. That's what I get for being a pink god from outer space in an elaborate disguise just to have fun amongst mere mortals. End up living under a rock. Minnie, we have to fix this immediately. This is, this is the fucking biggest problem that I've had since starting this game. We have to fix this immediately. I always thought Bigger was better when it came to plushies, but then they started usurping my bed. <laughs> Guess it's no Nablonian behind except f what? No Nablonian behind except for this one. Wait! Nebula sells more than one kind of big dumb hat? Ah, oh, shit. Well, being a space cowgirl is much better than being the Neblonians they wrangle for sport. <laughs> There's a small sign taped to the register. We carry less than $50 on the premises at all times, so please rob the shoot and start case instead. <laughs> Their security camera does not work. There's no better deterrence than deflection. Incredible. Oh shit, Pez dispensers. Suckers, jawbreakers, Pez dispensers, all the actionable sweets you could buy. But not a single cotton to candy. Talk about bad luck. Maybe the girl at the register knows where to, where to find some. Howdy, fellow invader. You wouldn't happen to sell cotton candy, would you? The machine by the Martian Bebop Saloon is clogged. It's a real mess out there. Green goop all over. I barely made it out of the splash zone when the whole thing went kaboom! Kabooey! <laughs> what flavor was it supposed to be anyway? Kiwi? Sour green apple? It looked like alien guts. Cloudy feathers were in it too. Ugh. The horse girl is full on shaking and sobbing. Oh god. Oh! G g crying loser! Okay, don't sweat it, Minnie. You've dealt with a sad loser for the first 12 years of your life. Just talk her down. <laughs> Wait, what are you thinking? I'm a god. Losers are supposed to spontaneously combust. That's how we make our bread and butter. I should just leave her alone. But that makes me feel like a bigger asshole than usual. Guess today is my day off. Why not spend a few minutes saving this loser from ugly crying at her public facing retail job? It'll be great practice channeling some rhyme level compassion anyway. Then that settles it. I'll get this loser to open up. Oh boy, here we go. This is about to be the worst. It'll be tough as an intimidating. It'll be tough as an intimidating cool kid, but I can start by asking what's wrong. And then he called him Cheesy Gordita Crunch and dragged him off to another perilous ride where they'll probably fight a god to the death. I can't take this. My BFF who became someone else's BFF who became a cool kid baking who became an average Joe only managed to become laser food. Why can't Cody just leave him alone? PB would be way better off as a loser. Wait! That Cody and PB? Okay, wait. Change of plans. Cody and PB are here. This horse girl wants PB to resend and... Cody to piss off? 
no, 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 I can't touch this. Today is Minnie's day, and Minnie does not want to take responsibility for the suffering of some random loser. Minnie wants some goddamn cotton candy. Sure, if Cody and PB stay gray, I'll get kicked out of Haven for sure, but that's a problem for future me. No matter the benefit, no matter how sad she looks, I have to say no. Losing PB is her problem. It's not like I had some amazing cool kid bail me out. Oh, fuck. Well, whatever, it's not like she even asked me to help. And then Daniel started another soliloquy. Oh, Peggy, thine boy of pizzas hath flown to the moon, and rather than fall amongst the stars, he hath fallen to, into nothingness. That's why I'm begging you, cool kid, help me turn PB back into a loser. If Daniel's right, and he always is, and if what he says makes any sense, which it never does, then we have to put PB on the moon. Uh, or, oh god, I'm a bad friend for even asking, aren't I? I'm sorry for dumping all that on you. I just, you just wish you could go back. Hmm. I mean, both of these can be true at the same time. Shit. Wow, we've gotten really sparing with our with our saves, huh? But but you can't. Back to what though? He's already headed down his destined path. What could you possibly do? Oh, shit. I grabbed the steeler steering wheel and swerve. Okay, that's okay. I was oh, I was on board for both of these options. I'm sorry. Of course you want him back to normal. Normal means playing lame games with your friends, delivering pieces on weekends, and spending more time with your family than your introverted brain can handle. That's not good for anybody. Anything but fighting the gods. So why not make him a miserable loser again? At least it's a misery he's had years of practice dealing with. Oof! Oh no! Actually, I can't in good conscience pick this. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna backpedal soon, right? Exactly. If saving PB from hurting himself means hurting him myself, then wait, no. If saving PB from hitting for itself, it means hitting him. No, no, if... You had it right the first time, hon. If saving him from himself means sending him to the moon, then it's all worth it in the end. No. No. I actually... I, wa I love the electricity, but I, but I refuse. Just, just on a moral standing, I can't pick that option. Back to what, though? He's already headed down his destined path. Grab the steering wheel and swerve. I drive off the road, get lost in the woods, get lost in the words, run out of gas and hitchhike only to get picked up by a bear with whom we'll have to make small talk with on the hours long drive back home. But I do it all for PB. I still have hope that all cool kids aren't the same. You won't turn your back on friendship, will you? Many sighs. Minnie swaps Peggy's Nablonian hat for a cowpoke hat. The name's Minnie, by the way. Don't wear it out. Really, don't tell it too many people. If you're going to put PB in his place and still be his friend, you'll need a proper disguise. And I know just the saloon to complete this getup. To Mars! Ah, to Mars! Oh my god, yes! Peggy hops the front desk. You just left right in front of your boss. Are you going to get murdered? Peggy hops front desk and rushes to the new galactic frontier. Are you kidding me, Peggy? This domain doesn't pay for your shenanigans. Get back here and work. <laughs> Marge's wings burst and fade away, leaving behind a single rubber toy. Aw, oh, well, why am I always cornered into committing morally ambiguous crimes? Penny scribbles an IOU to the god of Nebuland before heading out with Peggy. That's fine. Oh, look at them. The Nablonian Carousel, the safest ride in the park and probably one of PB's favorites. I hardly rode it last time I was here with him. I'd love to get another whirl. No way, Peggy. I'm already spending my best day, my day off turning your best friend forever into a big freaking freak. On the bright side, you two will have plenty of time on the midway once he's as green-eyed as you are. 
Uh, I completely forgot. I just used up my weekly 15 minute break. I gotta head back to the ranch or Marsha's gonna lambast me until the cows come home. Huh? Marsha who? I don't know, Marsha. I didn't blast nobody. Blast who now? I mean, <laughs> haven't you heard? The gods passed a new law that conveniently affects only you only today. Your break now lasts until your supervising puppet tells you otherwise. Oh wow, that is convenient. It's just like a cool kid to be so tuned in to the latest gossip from the gods. Thanks, Minnie. <laughs> oh god, Minnie walks along the midway only to bump her forehead on the low-hanging railway on the rocket coaster. Ah, what the fuck? Where's the god of park safety when you need him? But half the thrill of Nebuland is worrying about safety. By that logic, you'd make more profit working off the surface of a sun. Exactly, a supermassive star would fit perfectly at Nebuland. You don't, I meant. Minnie bumps her head on the railing again. Ah, but whatever, you just forget it. <laughs> God. Gotta love a theme park that commits to the bit. It's Martian aesthetic as far as the eye can see here. I mean, aside from the slight Cretaceous theme. And the whole cowpoke frontier area. And aren't there clowns on the east side of the park? How do you know? Maybe clowns and cowboys are aliens. Trust me, if there were clowns or cowboys in space, I'd be the first to know, okay? Wait, can we look at this body that we just... Uh, oh my god, is that Marsha? No, 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 it's okay. See, look, she's just a toy that looks like Marsha. <laughs> The mini squeezes the toy. Sounds like it's saying, Get me to wake me. Oh, just a regular squeaky toy. God. The Battle of Nebulactica is pretty thrilling if you like the sensation of your spine compressing into itself like an accordion. I'll pass. I'd rather save my spine for the spinomatic. Oh, the ride where you always fit the height requirement before but never after? That's the one. Wow, that's crazy. Not gonna cart you around the mall for a cool kid disguise when we can just throw something together at the park. What is this, the cat? Oh my god, can you imagine? Me being part of the jealous assessment task, getting to ascend to cool kid status? Leaving behind all my friends only to suffer the trials and tribulations of forming a new identity? Finding yourself outside the conventional realm of being forever cursed to an eternity of fighting against the very forces that made you- Actually, let's not imagine that. Yeah, enough wishful thinking. The Bebop Saloon is up that way. Skibbity Bebop. Oh, shit. Oh my god, look at all the people. Oh my god. They have a cat. Oh my god. Minnie and Peggy arrive at the Martian Bebop Saloon. There's more aliens. It's been a long trek, but we finally made it. Now, to grab some gear for the river and try not to die of dis- Ah, oh my god, it's them up there. Oh, great, make like a buffalo and hide. Oh, yes, show me more cool people. The two duck into some plastic bushes. What do we do? We can't play dress up with PB and Cody watching. They'll find out we're here to- What, what in tarnation were we doing here again? We're not playing dress up, we're here to make you a cool kid! Temporarily, of course. I mean, who better to push PB back to the green side than an intimidatingly cool bully for friendship who knows him inside out? B b bully Yeah, bully. If you want your friend back, you'll have to remind him that he's society's creepy, unhygienic, and socially awkward doormat. A total bottom feeder. But I get it if you don't want to. After all, you are a loser yourself. You don't need to remind me. I'll do anything to get PB back. Just tell me what to do. Stick to the bushes till I say so, then dash out and grab some gear. Just don't stay out there for too long or these those oafs will spy you. You got it. Now then, how much to grab? Look at the people. Oh my god, they're literally all so fucking cute. What the heck is this? A cloak. And then, wait, what are we trying to put together? A cool kid outfit? Oh my god, we have to get one of these vests. Look at them. A vest! And then, 
Uh, are these belts? A belt! Yeah. And then, pants. Yeah. And then, I mean, she's already got a hat. We should be good on the hat. What's this? A gun? Definitely. Oh my god, a barrel of guns? That's the most unsafe thing I've seen all day. And I once saw someone crash into the back rooms after swinging over the top of the battle sun. Better just give those things to the real cowpokes. I mean, are they real? Are they real guns? They wouldn't do that, right? A pair of boots. Fuck yeah. Vest, pants, boots, belt, cloak, that's it. I'll go get them. Piggy dashes out and grabs a cloak, vest, belt, pair of pants, and a pair of boots. Meanwhile, Cody finishes a cheesy gordita crunch wrapped chili dog while PB leans anxiously over the balcony railing. The floorboards creak beneath him. Oh man, you're fidgety too. Why didn't you just say so? Cody latches onto the railing and rocks back and forth viciously. <laughs> the entire balcony quakes. There's way too many people on that balcony for you to be doing that, my guy. Ah, stop! Oh, come on, Petey. We were just on the anti-matterhorn. How is this any worse? Everyone knows the only threat to the anti-matterhorn is the normal manti- The normal matterhorn shit, fuck. Cody sees out the corner of his eye something blurry zipping around the bushes below. Uh-oh, maybe I told her to grab too, grab too many things. Oh, big foot. Oh, gods, oh gods, I knew I shouldn't have been so greedy. There's only one way out of this. Minnie does the worst thing possible. An out-of-date internet dance trend. Wait, is that Kitty Chan down there? Oh, God, look away. Pretend we didn't see her. That's rude, Cody. She's Chewie's friend. We should at least say hi. Minnie screws up the dance. It's so out of date, she can't even remember it. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm going to have no electricity by the time this is over. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to go back. And we're going to grab a vest. And we're gonna grab a cloak. And we're gonna grab boots. And that's it. That's it. That has to be it. That's it. I'll go get them. Mm hmm. Grabs vest, cloak, and pair of boots. Great. Wonderful. Did we, did we succeed? No, we didn't succeed. No! I can't grab that many things. It's only three. It's only three. That's it. No, that's not it. Because I think we only grabbed the vest. Okay, vest and a cloak. Yes? Or maybe... No, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Vest and a cloak. Just do it real fast, like. There were only two things. I can only grab one? Is that how this works? Son of a fucking poop bucket. That's... What did I grab? I don't even remember. Grab a cloak. That's it. Just the cloak. No, I feel like cloak isn't cool, kid. Cloak is something that Daniel would grab. It has to be the vest. That's it. Go get the vest. Great. Wonderful. We did it, right? Cody and PB don't seem to notice Peggy dashing around. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Okay. She returns with her items in tow. Ah, uh, it worked out great. What can I say? I've got the intuition of a god. It only took, like, what? Five tries? Four tries? We got there eventually. Now then, just a few more things. Oh, we can make multiple runs at it. I'm so stupid. Okay, get a cloak. That's it, just that. Go get them. Yes, good, wonderful. PB stares down at the, co <laughs> the cotton candy crime scene. Ugh, 
cotton candy machine looks greener every time I look at it. Oh, sorry, buddy. There's way more puppet carnage where we're headed. On the bright side, they aren't all full of green goop. Some are full of delicious applesauce and angry math facts. Cody, are you brave, stupid, or just lacking self-preservation? Oh, you poor, simple pizza boy. You don't need preservatives when you're this fresh. Also, yes. Cody and PB don't seem to notice Peggy dashing around. Hell yes. That worked out great, and we're racking up the points. What can I say? I'm a fucking genius. Look at our stuff so far. It's just kind of really coming together. Now that I'm a god turning loser into cool kids a cinch. Guess having to redo the cat over and over again really paid off in practice, huh? Okay. Get boots. Yes. Definitely. Great. Wonderful. Ever feel drawn to the edge of a surface like a magnet's pulling you into the abyss? <laughs> I didn't know you liked Slake and Shark. <laughs> but now that I think about it, I really should have. You're painfully emo. Wow. Likewise, do you ever get the urge to push someone off? <laughs> Sorry, dude. I only listen to Y2K pop. Oh, God. <laughs> Cody and PB don't seem to notice Peggy. We did it again. Hell yes. Oh my god, we can actually grab everything, eh? Get a belt. That's it. Good. Great. We just have to do this one at a time. It's that easy. Quit looking down for once and look up over there. Look up metaphorically or up at Clown Town? I don't think I want to do that second thing. Yeah, Clown Town. That's where you live, ain't it? Hey, now. Peter elbows Cody in the rooms. We're in the pizza business, not funny business. <laughs> I just thought so, since you've got such big red shoes to fill. Cody and PB don't seem to notice Peggy still. We're really professionals at this. Do we really need pants? I mean, I guess so. Well, how do you feel? I feel okay, actually. It's like I'm only a couple stories up instead of 50. Guess exposure therapy really does work. Sick, now we can hit the rocket coaster. What? No, Cody, I need normal therapy for that. All right, all right. Guess you've got more than just a fear of heights when it comes to that ride. Let's just chillax at Clown Town then. You'll feel right at home there. Wait, I'll make the same joke twice. Just wait till I make it a third time. Cody and PB don't seem to notice Peggy still. Yahoo! We made a whole outfit. Good job, you got everything. Oh fuck yeah, we got confetti for it. Wh where did all this confetti come from? Well, almost everything. Hold still for the finishing touch. Peggy feels an odd sensation in her eyeballs. The kind you feel when a stranger shoves black market contact lenses into them. Cody and Peter make their way down from the bebop balcony. Man, we are gonna punch so many clowns. Wait, we're punching clowns now? what they ever do to you? Nothing. The park just gives you a free shrunken clown head if you help them with their clown problem. I'm sorry, it's an infestation? I... I only have more questions. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Holy shit. From the shadows of the bebop emerges a mysterious cowgirl. Uh, uh excuse me? You got a problem? She pulls a prop gun threateningly out of a nearby barrel. Looks Peter up and down. And snickers. What? Huh? What, what, what was that? Just some macho cool kid. Come on, dude. Let's bounce. Uh, okay, but was something on my face? Or in my teeth? Uh, I knew I shouldn't have had a spinach omelet for breakfast. 
Cody leads a very nervous Peter out of Mars. Oh my god, she looks so cute! <gasps> Jeez, Peggy, what was that? You hardly said a word to him. And it'll tear him up for at least a week. Peter Riddle hates nondescript social cues. Wow, whoa, who would have thunk? That's fucking diabolical. Sheesh. You know him so well, no wonder you're his best friend. Uh, yeah, just doing what a BFF would do. Don't worry, if we keep this up, he'll be back to normal before you can blink a cool blue eye. Let's tell him. Someone, someone tells me that they're headed to Clown Town. Oh my god, you look so fucking fantastic like this. I can do this. I just need to channel my inner cool kid. But I also need to channel my inner friend and cool kids make terrible friends. Wish I could say otherwise. How about we focus on making PB a loser now and worry about making you a good friend later. <laughs> right, one channel at a time. Yeehaw! Weekend's finally here. What better way to spend in to resend Petey Boy? I can read words. Just gotta find him somewhere in Clown Town and let Cowgirl Bebop do the rest. Oh, hey! An opportunity to get in character. Oh, hell yeah. Bebop kicks his saloon doors in. This Mars ain't big enough for the boat. The saloon door swing in, hit the stairs, and rebound into her face. Ah, oh, concern it. Actors know you're better off as a strong, silent type. Minnie waves her hand in front of the Nebulonian, pulling the boot cart. Nothing. She bops it on the head. It's fake! I knew it. By Jiminy, Minnie, this Nebulonian traveled all the way from Mars to Solid Squares, and you have the audacity to bop it? Wait, it came from Mars? I thought we were on Mars right now. Unless this place is only called Mars because it imports props from there? Wait, is my lore wrong? What? Bebop starts shaking. Better not question the grand illusion, grande illusion of the park unless you want her to totally freak. Okay. Ah, barrel full of guns! That's the most unsafe thing I've seen all day. I already said this. Oh, don't worry, there's just props. They only make a scary noise and shoot out a little flag. Bebop stares down the barrel of her gun. See, no danger to be seen. And he shoves the barrel away from her face. Stop it! Put your glasses back on! The thing really ups your cool kid intimidation factor, but we're not trying to poke anyone's eye out here, okay? So cool it, would you? Sheesh. Minnie waves her hand in front of the bl Oh no, I thought I was clicking on the little alien. Nar, squeaky. It's just a modern day camera disguised as an outdated old timey camera. <laughs> what better way to capture my wacky disguise in all its glory than a wackily disguised camera? Come on, let's take a pic. No way, I don't need proof I've been palling around with the loot. <gasps> it's beautiful! Oh my god, this is the greatest. Peggy drags Minnie in front of the camera and snaps a photo. Ah, oh, an authentic all timey sepia filter. Not bad. With the contacts and filter, no one can tell how lame you are. Cotton candy machine is ruined with puppet goo. Yowza! Either someone really hates cotton candy or really, really likes it. Peggy looks green in the face. Z z zero days. Zero days since last accident. They were coming up on a record of five, and now it's lost. Ah, cheer up, Peggy. We just need to take care of one more accident, and then you're home free. Wow. Oh, look at the hats. I don't get it. Aren't those fashionable cowpole cats just as immersive as those gaudy green Neblonian ones? Why make employees wear tacky when you could wear chic? Studies show that cool cats and losers alike will spend more money if the staff appear approachable. And nothing's more approachable than wearing alien red kill. What studies are you citing? <laughs> With the power vested in me, I now pronounce you the official cowgirl of the Bebop Saloon! 
And he wiggles her fingers as if to magically transform Peggy into a cool kid. <laughs> Best jokes. Always invest in my coin. No, don't. Ah, yeah, just jokes. We are not giving legitimate financial advice. Please don't do that. <laughs> Genuine Nablonian leather belts. Is that even ethical? Oh, don't worry. Most Nablonians want every Martian here. There's plenty of skin lying around to turn into belts, bags, and saddles with which to brutally tame them with. Okay, I question the part. Uh, question the park's ethics is a joke, but you're talking as if Nablonians are real. That they are real. How could you question their validity? Who's unethical now, Minnie? Who? Huh? Thank God these assless chaps come with the ass. You dingus, aren't those just normal chaps then? Not the way the puppets here advertise them. Assful chaps, get your assful chaps. Minnie hides her face in embarrassment. Ah, nothing like a cloak to hide your true identity. The only thing better is if you abandoned yourself entirely and became a totally new person with features only an audience beyond the fourth wall could recognize. But I guess we're going for a more temporary kind of disguise. Y yeah, I don't like change. I can't wait to be a regular old Peggy again. I can't click on any of the cool people, huh? Okay, I go now. Oh my goodness. More people. A little witch. Why are these aliens absolutely fucking everywhere? Over there, there's a little paddleboard heading into the clown hall of mirrors. Ah, PB hates his own reflection. Don't tell me Cody's forcing him to face the fear of heights, gods, and acne all in one day. Oh my god, we need to save him. Whoa, right in. Cowgirl, why run in guns a blazing when PB will just make a clown of himself? If his isoptrophobia doesn't remind him he's a loser, a carnival of nondescript laughs, cries, and screams will definitely do it. I mean, he does jazz hands. Isoptrophobia? Let me rephrase. We'll let him torment himself in the hall of mirrors while we tee everyone up to react right when Pee Wee comes back outside. The only thing worse than a nondescript social cue from a single cool kid is a nondescript social cue from all of Clown Town. Is this really the right cue that you're using here? Because I feel like that's not the right one. Anyways. Oh, I see. That's perfect. If everyone else pulls them into being a loser, then I won't have to. Lead the way. Look at these cool, cool people. Dang. Look at those wacky clowns. The wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing clowns are aliens are surrounded by losers who stare in abject fear. <laughs> Peggy joins them. Come on, Bebop, saying cool kid characters. Sheesh, what the hell is going on over there? Although, you do make a, sh a good sharp point. If we pop these inflatable menaces, we'll get this gaggle of geeks to squeak for sure. Of course, PB hates screaming lizards. They trigger stark memories of the bucket raids of 97 and 98 and 99 and so on and so forth. Heck, they might even drag him back into his memories of being a terrifying cool kid. And what better way to shock the remaining cool out of his system? Consider the clown aliens queued up. See, now that was the proper use of that cue. The bench populated by a single lone clown statue is surrounded by... Nobody. This thing is horrendous. This thing's horrendous? What a waste of a good bench. Yeah, why wouldn't anyone want to keep Old MacDonald company? This is way better than sitting alone. Oh, I've got it. Bebop steps behind the clown statue and speaks in a clown voice. Whatever that means. Hey, peoples, your best friend forever says you can use that how you want. You see that one you see as a human shield against literal gods that rule the world from outer space. Uh, let, let's just keep it simple. How does a 360 degree head spin and acid spit sound? Oh my god, yes. BB hates inaccurately articulated anatomy. But I don't know if he can survive acid spit. Guess even losers still need their faces, huh? 
whatever, consider an acid-free haunted head spinning McDonald teed up. Oh, what? The clown cut out Sandy is surrounded by nobody except for aliens. This thing's kind of lame. Nothing queue up here. Can I get a move up? You mean I could be a Napoleon disguised as a cowgirl disguised as a freaking clown? It's a photo op of a lifetime! <gasps> oh my goodness. Peggy tracks me behind the clown cutout and snaps a photo. <laughs> what? The cutout? Oh man. I blinked and somehow really lost where I was. The cutout holds a sign that reads, We're all floating great down in Clown Town. Couldn't just wait for your friend or send so you could take a pic with him instead, huh? Well, well maybe we could be friends. Alright, friends. You really need to learn your lesson about cool kids. Oh. oh, shit. The rocket coaster's passing through Clown Town. What? The rocket coaster slowly makes its way through Clown Town before it comes to a stop at the station next door. Look at us, seeing the rocket coaster as anything but a light speed blur is a once in a lifetime opportunity to block the tracks too dangerous, derail the coaster too violent, slash the tires, spaceships don't have tires, fill it with spaghetti, dang, forgot my spaghetti, push PB into a seat against his wall, oh, only an uncreative hack of a part time after school special bully would do that. Come on, Minnie, think! I've got it! Minnie pulls out a marker, pulls a marker out of her bag and winks at Bebop. Please God, tell me that isn't permanent, Marshall. Make me scrub until either the graffiti or my fingernails are gone. Don't worry, Marshall won't be making you do anything for a very long time. Minnie whispers her plan. <laughs> oh, you devious devil. That'll definitely get the residents of Clown Town reacting, and PB hates it when people react. The rocket coaster continues its orbit around the park, leaving Clown Town. We can kill some time until it comes back. As soon as you see it, we'll skip PB out of the tent. Roger that. Um, is there even anything else to look at? Oh, this thing. Drown the clown. Oh, God. Surrounded by losers who are accidentally spraying other losers and cool kids who are also spraying other losers. <laughs> even the cool kids have bad aim. Whatever helps you sleep at night, Bebop. That gives me an idea, though. PB will be mortified if he thinks cool kids and losers are targeting. Let's aim the water guns at him as soon as he leaves the tent. That's genius. PB hates getting doused with water. I can hear him now. Am I on fire? Did, uh, did I win a football game? A am I on a, early, a hit early 2000s TV show trying to empty out the government's slime reserves? <laughs> I'll never know who, what, or why is hitting him. Then consider the alien clown water gun offensive, offensive queued up. Great. Yep, it's just a tent now, hey? Hold oh, on. No, no. Oh no, I can't stop yawning. Just one more lap around Prankster Park. We should make sure all our reactions are teed up before dragging PB out to face them. I'm pretty sure I clicked on everything, but you gotta make super sure, you know? Like, what even is this over here? Just a weird little eyeball thingy? Eh. Okay. Fine. You win. We do this now. Get him. We're all set. Go get him. Here I come, puppy buns. Peggy runs in only for me to drag her back out. Hey, remember, you're a freaking cool kid, dingus. Oh, right. Gotta act cool. Cowboy Bebop sets off on a very cool, very serious journey to capture the prized bounty. Only for her to drag herself back out. Wait, I'm confused. If I'm in the tent, who's helping us set off all these reactions? Oh, uh... I'm very fast. Look, don't worry about it, okay? Just get in there and get pee pee. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh shit. Peter tilts his head to one side. His reflection follows suit. At least the gray eyes suit my personality more. Maybe this facing your fierce thing isn't so bad. Oh shit. He turns away and walks straight into another mirror. 
Ow! Oh, I could have sworn this was the way out. He reaches out in a dark hall of mirrors, hitting glass after glass. Oh, shit! Until he hits a genuine Nablonian leather cowpoke vest. Huh? Wh who's there? Cody, is someone here? Oh, shit! Spectre grabs Peter and drags him towards his fate. Meanwhile, something dashes through the inflatable clown aliens. Past old MacDonald on his bench. Around a game of Drown the Clown. And back into hiding as Peter is thrown out of the tent. Ah, C Cody, help, it's got me, it's... Peter looks up to find the specter has disappeared. Losers scream in abject fear. Old MacDonald spins his head 360 degrees. <laughs> Water guns shoot at Peter. Huh? What's going on? S -s Sorry, did I do something? I, I didn't mean to. I, I just thought I saw something in there, so I... Hey, oh no. Peter begins to shut down, but manages to stop himself for just a moment long enough to take a deep breath. He looks down at his hands. The pitch black street, the artificial acid green grass, and looks up. A popped inflatable clown alien, a clown statue with a broken neck, faulty water guns in a fair game. I guess there are a million things people could be reacting to. And I mean, what could I have even done wrong anyway? I've been innocent this whole time. Peter, dude, you okay? I was taking care of a rabid clown when I heard you freaking out. Is something going on? Are you, uh, ha having a little panic? It's okay, you know, we could go home, play some geeky games or whatever. A actually, Peter sees that Clown Town is returning to its usual state of chaos. The kind of chaos that thankfully isn't about him. I think I'm gonna be okay. At least for a little bit. Uh, how about we hit the rocket coaster and then head home? You sure? You've been on, like, all day rides, heights, reflections. It's okay if you want to call it quits while you're ahead. I think I can do it. You'll be there for me, and even if you weren't, I'll be there for me. Maybe that's enough. Oh, I love them so much. What good little buddies. Cody ruffles, Peter, Cody ruffles Peter's hair. About time you quit being a clown and skip this town. At this rate, you'll be a god hunter in no time. G -g god hunter? No, 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 no. Peter can't find a god. Cody's gonna get him turned into ashes. We didn't even face him. Just a few days ago, he was practically pranking himself. Don't tell me Cody's prank immunity is rubbing off on him. I don't care. I'm not letting him take my BFF away. Come on! Oh no. The roar of rattling carts is replaced with the quiet murmur of passengers disembarking the ride. Last chance back out. Ready for round two? Yeah, let's do it. Peter and Cody fist bump and hop into the coaster. Oh, there, fellow invaders, this coaster's not big enough for the both of you. Either I get on that coaster, I'm putting you under it. Oh, well, rules are rules. First cool, first serve. Psst, I, I know I shouldn't be the one talking, but don't go overboard, Pegs, okay? The name's Bebop. You still got that squeaky toy? Uh, yeah. And he tosses the toy to Bebop. Aces, I'll see you on the ground floor, partner. The coaster takes off. We're talking about a commitment to the bit, sheesh. Oh no. Oh great, looks like that macho dumbass boarded the ride with us. What? It it's kind of loud up here. Mucho asshats bonafide sus? Yeah, I know, right? What? <laughs> the coaster enters a tunnel. Ah, it's dark. I hate the dark. 
and heights and speeds and clowns and rats and kitchen grease and tight clothes and heavy traffic and everything. <laughs> uh, but, but at least I'm involved with it all now. Get it, Cody? There's no answer, only the rattling of the coaster. Thanks for helping me. I hope it's okay that I'm still afraid. Coaster leaves the tunnel. Cowgirl Bebop holds her prop gun threateningly. Looks Peter up and down. And takes aim! Ah! Marsha's lifeless rubber body shoots out, hits Peter in the face, and falls into his lap. Listen, loser. Even the fights you manage to win, they're going to pile up. And you're going to have to carry that weight. So take my advice. Quit while you're ahead. Peter throws Marsha up in the air. Ah, okay, okay, well, whatever you say, cool, cool kid. Peter feels a familiar burning sensation in his eyes. The coaster enters another tunnel. The mysterious cowgirl bebop disappears like a ghost in the night. Ow! What the? Minnie looks down and sees Marsha's lifeless rubber body. She looks up and sees bebop falling? Wow, bebop! Oh my god, she really just leapt off the fucking- What the shit? When he dons her wings and zips up into the artificial sky. Oh my god, look at them! She uses the last of her wings energy to dart towards Cowgirl Bebop. She catches her triumphantly. There's something too electrifying about Minnie's chivalrous revolutionary girl catch! Ah! Oh my god, yes. Holy shit. Oh, my sweet child, though, no. She glides gently to the ground, but not before the on-ride camera snaps a photo. Ugh, why do I always forget about the second tunnel? Oh my god, have you ever heard of keeping your arms, legs, and entire body on the ride at all times? This is sorry, I clean the rocket coaster every day. I just thought I'd fall into the bushes like usual and not to a fluffy pile of uh, wings. Uh The rocket coaster returns. The roar of rattling carts is replaced by the panicked hyper panicked hyperventilating of Pizza Boy. And he stuffs her wings back into her bag. Uh look, I did you a favor. You got your best friend back. So please don't tell me anyone that you saw me here, okay? She poofs seemingly out of existence, or at least attempts to. With her dormant wings and deadened magic, all she can do is run. No! Wait, Peter, it's okay. No, how am I supposed to help you if I'm just some stupid pizza boy again? What was everything even for? I'm destined to be a nobody. Just forget about me. Dude, cool it, okay? How, think of how much of an ass you're being to yourself, okay? No one should be beating you up over nothing. Not even you. This isn't nothing. If you really cared, you'd just leave me alone. Pizza Boy runs off. Cody sighs. No, That was such a good episode, but my sweet child. <laughs> Look at them, though. Ay, ay, ay. I love this game! Oh, man. Heck.